Hello guys, this is Just One Guy and I'm back here with another Unity tutorial and today we're going to be teaching the AI how to jump. Now right here we have our AI character right here which is going to be doing the jumping and over here we have the player which is the target of the AI. Now the AI is set up to follow the player anywhere around but in this particular case he's set up to jump after the player. So let me just give a little demonstration. Right here we have this AI script and I have this variable test jump. And whenever I hit it, the AI will jump closer and closer to its target. Let's just hit play. And as you can see, ooh, just change this. It's based on its jump power right here. So however, uh, However, how you put this means uh, how far you can jump. Now, it's important to note that also controls how high you can jump. So, uh, whatever the length of his jump will be, will also will be the height of his jump. Let's just change that to 6 for now. And let's just hit test jump. You see, there's a first jump. And a second jump. Now it's important to note that there are many different ways to uh, make the AI jump, but this one works best for me. And the reason is, is because if you watch some of my other videos, you can see I was making a game based off the Mistborn uh, series of books. And in that game, the character needs to be able to jump, uh, double jump in the air multiple times. And this is the method that worked best for that. Now there are other methods and it's notable uh, and it should be of note that Unity does have its own method of achieving this but it comes with several problems. The first being is, let's just go in game and demonstrate. If I hit test jump, you can see the AI moves in an arc that uh, looks like a natural jump. And even when he's jumping on top of here, he moves in an arc. He jumps a little bit above the box and then lands on top of it which is how our natural jump will work. Now with Unity's method, it doesn't do that. What it does is it just follows a straight line from here to there, which looks very unnatural and is very hard to animate. It also does that when you're coming down. Another problem I ran into using the Unity method is, you can see I can control the speed of the jump using jump speed right here make some jump faster or slower but with unity's method yeah uh, when he jumps and does that weird arc thing I mean that weird straight line thing you can't control the speed of the jump so uh, those two factors combined make the jump look very unnatural because he just kind of floats up in a slow method like that in a straight line another problem is if I go in game and I hit test jump, you can see the character can jump from one point in the floor to the other. Uh, Unity doesn't really have a method for uh, doing that. They more deal with uh, just situational jumps, like if you need to jump over a river or a gap, or you needed to jump from uh, one place to another, uh, going up and down vertical. And sometimes, like say you had a fighting game where you wanted the character to jump towards the target, and uh, land with a kick or something like that uh, you would want them to jump from one point in the ground to the other and you would want them to do it dynamically and unity doesn't really cover the, uh, those situations now with that being said let's just uh, see how everything works first we have this AI script right here and all these exposed variables right here is just what you would need to uh, uh, all the stuff you would need to change but there actually is a lot more, uh, more variables if I hit debug right here you can see all the variables right here and I'll get into it in a second in the script and I've only changed a little bit of stuff within Unity's uh, standard controllers let me just make sure I've got everything down okay and now let's go in the script uh, I actually did forget to go over a couple of things. 
And let's just go in game so I can go over them now. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, uh, let me just remove that debug, is if I hit test jump, you see that little green line right there that goes up and then over. That's to make sure he doesn't hit anything while he's jumping. Now, to just show you how it works, let's just make his jump power 2. And now give him a test jump. And he's struggling to jump, and you can see that line turn red. Now, when that line turns red, he won't be able to jump forward anymore because there's something in his way. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And this prevents him from jumping into objects or anything. You can see when I hit test jump now, he can't jump because there's an object in his way, and that's what let him know an object is in his way. Now let's just uh, make this 6 again, and try it, and he's not going to be able to jump. So let's just restart it. That's the first method, keeping him from uh, jumping into objects. Another thing that's going to keep him from jumping into objects is, uh, there's a... Uh, what do you call it? A function for the nav mesh called uh, get nav mesh point, and I use that when I'm uh, testing where he's gonna jump at, and so he can never jump on it to any point that's off the nav mesh, so he will only jump on uh, a nav mesh point. So that'll keep him from jumping into weird areas and getting stuck or anything like that, because it uh, it makes sure that he can only jump on a nav mesh. Another thing is he'll never overshoot his jump. You can see right there he's uh, trained to jump towards the target and this is how far he can jump but he's not going to actually jump that far he's just going to jump towards the character so you can see that he'll never over jump anything let's make sure that's it and now let's just go into the script okay now we're here in script and we're going to go over some of the simpler changes in the AI character controller script, the script to control the AI. We just have to make these simple changes right here in the update. Now, this is just to make sure you don't get any errors. The only uh, line I really added was if agent is active and enabled, because we're going to be turning off the nav mesh when it's in the air. And if you didn't turn the nav mesh off while the character was in the air, uh, they would just uh, plummet towards the ground because the nav mesh is only designed to work on the ground so to get around getting errors for that we're just going to put uh, if agent is active and enabled but due to the way that unity wrote the script I had to change uh, some of the ways written so just change your update uh, function to look like this and I'll just format it just to make it a little bit easier oh, it's already formatted okay so I just added that and then added else uh, character move. It's important that the character always have a move variable because this is the function that animates the character. So if you didn't call this, the character wouldn't be animated. So you shouldn't run into any trouble as long as you your update function looks like this in the AI character control script. Now let's go over to the third person uh, character script. And the only thing I've added was this little function right here called show grounded status. Now, because the grounded status is private in the regular script, I just returned uh, what the, is the character grounded or not. This tells is the character touching the floor or not. And I just returned that method because we're going to need to know that. And that's all I wrote in here. So I got to write this public bool, show grounded status and then put return uh, grounded status. Okay, now let's just go into the AI script and explain what I wrote. Now I'll have a link to the script in the description if you wanna download it, but uh, I'll also go over it here. First we have the jump speed. This controls how fast the character can move while they're in the air. Controls how fast the jump is. Next we have uh, 
has room to jump and this is the variable letting us know do we have the room to jump or is there something in the way as I showed before with the green lines if there's something in the way the green lines will turn red and the character simply won't be able to jump next we have a uh, jump landing point this is the 3d vector point where we want the character to land simple uh, we have the jump start point. This is the point that we want the character to jump from. So we want it to start the jump here and end the jump here. Uh, this is used for calculating the uh, the jump in the air. And let's see. Uh, this is another one used for calculating the jump in the air. This is the variable to let us know when to start the jump. This is the variable to let us know when to end the jump. Uh, this lets us know when to turn the nav mesh back on because you uh, in a normal jump the way a uh, normal person would use it you wouldn't really uh, need this and you wouldn't run into problems but when doing uh, double and triple jumps the way I was doing it and the way I was using it uh, the character ran into some issues where they were going through the floor so this uh, prevents that when they were trying to when the character lands it couldn't really tell when to reset the nav mesh so it would go through the floor or we get stuck in the air and this was to stop that and I'll go over that more when I get into the functions but that's what that variable is for uh, we have the target of course which is the target that we want uh, the character to chase down I've set it up so the target is the same target as uh, any AI character controller so there won't be any need for you to mess with that which is why I set the private uh, the distance to the target how far away is this target that we're chasing and this is the test jump the button I was hitting to activate the jump we have our temp cube right here now the temp cube is going to give us a visual representation of where the character is supposed to jump and that's what that's for it's just a regular cube with a, a time destruction on it so it just instantiates for a couple of minutes well a couple of seconds and then it goes away and the only purpose for this is to give the uh, the programmer a visual representation of where the character is going to jump. And right here we have our test length. When the character is putting those green lines uh, to see where it wants to jump, this is this is what tells it how far it can jump and how high it can jump. Next we have our nav mesh agent, which is the nav mesh agent which controls how the the, the the unity function that control well not the unity function the unity component that controls uh, walking and moving and the AI movement uh, now this is important to note because uh, unity's uh, AI control script this is how you have to access it I guess you could uh, put that up here but I we I got lazy and I just put it down here but if you want to change uh, which script this is you have to change uh, this right here and also with the character script right here because unity uses uh, namespaces so to access this script you have to put the whole namespace thing right there so if you want to change it just note that you have to change uh, this right here but this is the AI script right here and this is the character script right there now we have our start function which just uh, gets the agent which is on it it's a get component simple AI get component and a character get component now we have our first function which is get the target distance and it just says distance to target equals vector 3 distance transform uh, position transform uh, target position so it just gets the distance how far away is the character next we have our update which I'll go over in a minute first I'm going to go over uh, all the other functions right here we have our jump setup this is the setup for the jump the first thing it does is it makes the player I mean it makes the AI look in a position that we want it to jump it turns it to that position it rotates it around what is that the Y axis it rotates it around there until the player is looking in the uh, uh, direction it wants to jump then it gets the, the length of the jump and the length of the jump 
it decides it based on how far the character is away. Now, if the char if the AI's uh, jump ability is less than the full distance it takes to get to its target, it'll jump as far as it can, and that's what controls that. This just says uh, uh, jump as far as you can if the distance is too far, and then if the distance uh, isn't too far, and the AI character is within its ability. Well, no, sorry, I got it backwards. Uh, this says uh, if the if the character uh, if the distance to jump is less than the uh, AI's ability to jump fa that far, it'll jump as far as it can. So this will keep it from over jumping. And then if the distance is too far, it just jumps the maximum distance that it can. <laughs> A little confusing. I made it. I know, but essentially this just keeps it from uh, over jumping. And then it sends that to its test length right there, which uh, it tests if that area is clear for jumping. And this function right here, the sample position, is the thing that makes uh, us only jump on the nav mesh. It tests whether there's an area to be a jump to in the nav mesh, the point you want to jump to. It, it sends it here, and then it says, is that area on the nav mesh? And if it isn't, it doesn't jump. If it is, it, uh, it jumps to that point. And we just turn the uh, agent off, the nav mesh agent, so we're able to jump in the air. We get it, we get our landing point based on uh, where the position is, and uh, we instantiate the cube just to, uh, so we can see where the AI is jumping. And then finally, we jump. Now, in the final complete script, I'll have a little uh, button which will basically say, "Well, we could put it in now if." Just put it right here. Public. And oh, we messed up on that one. <laughs> uh, paste. And I forgot to put that as a bool. Okay, now if you hit that button, it'll show the cube. If you don't want to show the cube, just don't hit that button. <coughs> and that'll make it a, a lot better for uh, if you just want to take it and uh, copy this whole thing and use it rather than having to program that part out. But that essentially just shows the cube so you can see exactly where the AI is jumping and then it calls the jump function. Of course, this right here is just a variable we put there just in case we don't want to show the cube. And we're just going to move this up here and put it right here. Now we have the jump function. Uh, the first thing it does is calls another function uh, called off mesh. This is just to save us uh, from getting errors. So it gives us a little bit of time before it turns the nav mesh off. And it just sets the jump point and uh, tells us to start jumping and tells us we're not any in the jump. Then we have on collision enter. This is a unity function. This is letting us know we hit something which is most likely the ground. And it's a little complicated to explain, but when we hit the ground, we don't want to uh, turn a nav mesh on right away because it gives us some errors like that. So we just uh, wait a second and we test if we really hit the ground or not by hitting a show grounded status, which we put right here. We test if we really hit the ground because sometimes you can hit uh, stuff other than the ground and we don't want the nav mesh to turn on just in case of that. So if we did hit the ground, we uh, wait a couple of seconds and then we turn back on the nav mesh and then we have this uh, is agent nav mesh on. And then this was the function I was talking about before that makes sure you don't turn the jump mesh, I mean the nav mesh too fast and get potential errors. Now in a normal jump situation when you just want the character to jump once, this really shouldn't be an issue. But since I wanted the character to jump multiple times, it became an issue. So I needed that right there. But if you're just using it to jump from one point to another, 
you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, the off, this is the function right here that was calling off mesh before. It just says yield, wait for five seconds, and then turn the agent off, the unnaf mesh agent off. And this uh, function right here just restarts it, which uh, another one I was talking about before. If the character is grounded, then turn the nav mesh back on, else wait to uh, turn the nav mesh back on. Right here we have a stop jump. This simply says, uh, hey, we're ending the jump. So set start jump to false, set the jump reset timer to zero, and turn back on the nav mesh. Right here we have handle air movement. This is just uh, a function to control arc. Now the math is a little bit uh, hard for me to explain because this is more of a unity function uh, which just controls uh, doing an arc. So that's just what it does. It calculates the arc when you're jumping. And then at the end of the arc, when it gets close to the end, it just says uh, stop jumping. And right here we have the function which uh, tests if we have enough room. This is the function that creates the green and red beams. And it basically just fires uh, one up and then one over. And then just says, uh, if there's something in the way, don't jump. We don't have room to jump. And if there's not anything in the way, it says we have room to jump. And that's basically it for the script. That's all I changed. Now let's just go back in game. Okay, now we're back in game. And you can see we have our little function, show jump area, which is probably a bad name for it, but uh, I'm bad at naming stuff. Now you can see if we don't have that on, doesn't show the cube, it just jumps to the point. And if we do press that button, he does show the cube of where the character's gonna jump. And now the reason I make this is because uh, I had a lot of time, a hard time figuring out how to jump. If you see my other videos, it took me about two weeks to come up with this method. And most of that was just going through different methods of jumping that didn't work for me. And I feel this is the one that's the easiest and most versatile and works in 90% of the situations. And it's just a good method for jumping. Anyway, the link to this AI jump script will be in the description. You can just copy the function, the one function that I put in here, the third person character script, which is the Unity script. You can copy that function from the video. And the little bit of coding that I put in the AI character control, you can also copy for the video. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.